Hey everyone, Gareth here from Seeker. I've got something pretty cool to share with you. I caught up with Alex from Pitchbox recently, who demoed some of their latest AI and automation features for my team. We hit record, and actually it turned out to be a really interesting conversation, and they've agreed to let me put it out there and share it with you all. Enjoy. The first thing I want to show you is the AI, how to write extremely effective email templates, outreach email templates, um, using AI. I'll talk about AI template assistant. So we have, this is, I, I guess one of the questions, yeah, people say when we started showing this to some of our customers, they're like, well, what's the difference with Pitchbox's AI uh, template assistant that it write email templates versus me just going open AI? So the reality is that we, we've been in business for over 10 years. We have so much data. So, and as you know, we've done, um, data studies. We aggregate a ton of data, and and we've done with Brian Dean. Yeah, um, we've shared some of the stuff uh, with BB that she that she presented at at uh, Brighton. We're working at Brighton, yeah. well, right. So what we did was we took like we've looked at we've aggregated all of our millions of emails, outreach emails, and we've looked at certain um, aspects of those emails, certain phrases, certain words, and we're feeding that into the AI. We're basically training, tuning those AI models, right? What's going to get really, what's going to drive the most, um, the most attention and the highest responses. Cause you could go to open AI and ask, you know, write me an email template, yeah. uh, for guest post outreach, whatever you're going to get the typical, I mean, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not going to be as crappy as like here. Hello, uh, dear sir, madam. But it's not going to be too far away from that. You'll get, yeah, I came across your website. Your content mm. is great. I want to, you know, I want to contribute. Everybody gets those. They're boring, right? So yeah. we stay, we're staying away from that. And we've, we've uh, tuning those models to give us the, the, the cream of the crop. So mm. um, I have a, and we, we're going to be adding more of these categories in there and more templates. So I'm selecting guest mm. post. Um, the one I've been kind of playing around mostly with just the guest post. Sorry, I was just going to say, um, yeah, the, on on the template thing, the first time I went to chat GPT and said, obviously, it was one of the first things I did as a link builder. I was like, write me an outreach email. And uh, the first time I was impressed. I was like, that's pretty cool for a first go. Yeah. Um, and then, and then you know, you start thinking about it and you start, you start doing more and you realize everything's a bit generic and samey. And yeah. uh, because, of course, it, it's trained on what's out there on the web. And unfortunately, most of the most of the stuff out there on the web in terms of outreach template, uh, you know, outreach email templates and things is very generic. And, um, you know, everyone's doing the same stuff. And I think I remember for Seeker like five years ago, a competitive advantage I think that we, we had was actually just writing really good outreach emails. That helped us stand out mm. from the crowd and, and, and convert sure. and, uh, and win pitches because the rest of the junk that was out there that, because we, we've got our own affiliate sites and things um, and e-commerce sites and things, the stuff that comes through is just utter rubbish. So, um, so we put, we put the writers into Pitchbox to do the act, to do the pitching and the communi communications. Cause at the end of the day, they're, they're fantastic communicators. It's what they do. It comes, right. it becomes natural to them. Uh, I think what I've seen over the years is that competitive advantage is every, Everybody else is now le leveling up and outreach emails are all really solid, really well written and, uh, you know, grammatically correct, of course, is a, a good first start and generally pretty good guest post pitches, etc. cetera. Um, but now because everyone is doing that, you need to find a new competitive edge to stand out against all the, uh, you know, all the rubbish. And this is where, um, yeah, offering something different or, um, being really personalized uh, with and uh, customized with your yeah, outreach emails because you know I'm I'm a sucker if someone someone sends me and they, a pitch whether it's a sales pitch or something and they've spent time to actually really like learn about me or write me something that's custom if I don't feel like I'm being templated then I'm I'm more likely to engage with that with that yeah, prospect it's, right it's funny. So, yeah for sales I I totally agree for sales what I actually I've had um uh there's a company that's been pitching me and, I, and their first email came through and it was like really really good and i was like i was pretty impressed i was about to respond and then i was like you know what i'm sure there's going to be a follow-up wait for the I wanna, sequence yeah. i want to see what that follow-ups look <laughs> yeah. like 
and I waited for the follow. The follow up came through, and it was really good as well. And I just, you know, I kept waiting, and and the salesperson was really persistent. And I think after the fifth email, I was like, okay, I owe it to him. So I sent him an email <laughs> back, and I said, let's get on yeah. a call. And I got, and I said, do you yeah. know? And I, and I told him, I said, do you know why I didn't respond sooner? He's like, why? I said, I wanted to see. I want to see your entire <laughs> sequence, right? We had a laugh, uh, but that's yeah, true. I mean, that's that, true. There's, there's some people take the time and they put some really solid stuff yeah. out there and it works. Yeah, um, exactly. Stuff doesn't. All right, let's jump yeah. in here. Um, so cool. we, we, like I said, we have a bunch of different templates in there. I'm just going to go with the one, which is kind of like free form almost. And like I said, so this is peanut allergy. I'm going to say um, something like, uh, what's my topic? Uh, let's do traveling traveling i've done some travel stuff before so traveling uh with kid uh who has a peanut allergy um so then we have like we call them ai enhancements um we'll do include an article outline yep so it basically is just gonna give some suggestions there yeah. write it voice so this is a <laughs> cool one um uh, we put some cool stuff in here i'm just gonna do stand-up comedian and then add a joke. Yes, what a joke about? Let's do peanuts. Oops. Peanuts and walnuts should be on topic. Kind of joke. <laughs> uh, I don't Love know. It. Let's do fun. Um, and then include emojis. Yes, uh, we'll do. We'll include them throughout. And then additional instructions. No, nothing. All right. So let let's go generate. It might take yeah. a minute. So um, you know, we were talking about. So OpenAI, of course, is trained on the web and all it, everything it can find out there about outreach email templates and all of the guides and the tutorials and forums and et cetera. And it's learned that's that's what it knows about outreach email templates, uh, which is pretty cool, uh, of course. But you guys have a closed data set here, a private data set, which, like you said, been, um, you know, uh, platforms been going for 10 years, um, like plus your um, so you your model is is trained on your own data sets but we are yeah. feeding it feeding our own data and giving it yeah. lots of instructions of what it is that yeah. we want and what it is that we don't want in those emails um mm -hmm. which is critical for having a you know a pretty solid email like this there you go here's what it would look like um so and and again it's it's tuned for the actual template so you can see like it's high cnt first name <laughs> this is our personalization field so yeah. when i insert it into templates it's going to already use you know the the personalization the same thing with like outreach email signatures yeah. and things like that it's a better it's a better dad joke than i could have come up with uh, about about walnuts and peanuts um yeah. i would say maybe yeah obviously it's you know possibly too many emojis but you can config you can customize that right <laughs> you can keep for sure uh, you can because uh, you you chose emojis throughout, so um, I did. Yeah, so I guess yeah, you can and I can yeah, that, I can but... yeah, I can adjust them. Yeah, and I have like I have, yeah. have I, I did a, yeah. I had a couple of them, um, and you know thanks. And again, it, it's just it's so different than than from mm. your typical stuff. Can you just start there? Because I'm, I'm I want to screenshot this and drop it on Slack for the team. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. So I can show them. There we go. Saved. And then you know, I can copy the text and throw it into whatever, but I could also insert yeah. it right into my email template. And, and now I have it in my email template. And, and mm. if I, you know, if I go and uh, template plane, whatever, call it attempt one, uh, I'll select an email account and then I'll click on next. Um, we'll do a smart preview and it'll, you know, it basically pulls, yeah. uh, pulls this thing. So again, it's not just creating a, a an outreach email template is creating an outreach email template that's designed for pitch box. Um, so, so that's, you know, kind of that's step one. Nice. Again, you can utilize a, a couple of different ones and then, and really tune it with uh, whether you want to, you know, write it in different voice, add jokes, kind mm. of jokes, things like that. So that's, that's the email, that's the email yeah. template setup. So the, um the additional instructions is that, so you can, add your own customizations to the prompt or yes. is that to go into the pitch? Yeah. Like for example, let's say you feel that the pitch is too long and you could say, you yeah. know, keep it 
to 200 words. You yeah. could say, make sure that it's targeted toward, or you could say, just write this in Spanish. <laughs> nice. And and cool. it's gonna write, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah it's just additional instruction kind of yeah. free free form stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah, because I, I do like the short and snappy outreach emails. I like to I like to get straight to the point um and get you know get all the key elements in there, of course. But so I could go in there and, and just write keep it to X amount of words or only give me three post pitches um or something exactly. like that. Yeah, 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 nice. yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and then even if you could say, give me only three, see, this is the thing you, you could say, give me 10. And then once you get it in here, you're going to find the 10 True. and, and can find the two or three that you yeah, really yeah. like, yeah. right? Like the most, or, or fix them, yeah. or fix them around. And that's where yeah. that sort of like this thing is, is kind of useful because I'm like, yeah, I remember I did, I really like the post from there or like the joke. Uh, from another one or I like the opening and you can really just take you know bits and pieces mm -hmm. of it combine you know combine yeah. them so every single every single go at regenerate is going to give you a different template mm. and you can go back and look through the history as well so, you can go back and look at yeah. the history yeah yeah for sure and you also might like you know if you you really like something and let's say you're working with a client who is whatever into travel and you went a bunch and you're like you know what, I really like this one you can actually uh, more, uh, uh, make it uh, favorite, favorite yeah. right? And then you yeah. can come back to you, and you can come back to your favorites. Um, so, so again, there's lots of cool stuff here. Just uh, one more quick question on yeah. the, uh, the um, the template. So, can you you can pull in all of the 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 custom fields, the personalization fields, and things? Then you can use those to to tweak things further and automate things you can still yeah so it generates the email template and once you get it mm -hmm. into your template then you can still enhance it even further yeah. with your personalization fields and okay. i don't know if we'll have time because we're actually doing ai personalization fields as well the idea there once it goes into production is you're going to be able to define i'll show you how to define those but you're going to be able to basically set up a custom field and say, this is an AI custom field. And uh, what's behind the custom field is the prompt. Yeah. But yeah. for you, go on. But the prompt, actually, the cool part of it is, is it's a custom field with the prompt. But when we're sending this information to or request to the AI, along with it, we're passing the information about the website and the content. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, because if you just say uh, yeah. custom field, what's today, it'll say today is whatever, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. But you want to say, what is this article about? You need to pass the article to it. Or you mm. could say, what's the what's the uh, the H1 on nice. this? Uh, or, or yeah, or, or summarize yeah. the H1. Or what are the top three keywords this particular page should rank for, right? And you got to feed it the data. So that's yeah. the really cool part. That, so we're yeah. basically combining our capabilities of uh, of our crawling, of Pitchbox extracting mm. you know data from the websites with the AI and then combining together and give you mm. the ability to write prompts to it. Yeah, and I'll show you. That, cool. um, that, that now the next a, thing. Sorry, go on. I was, well, I was just yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. that that unlocks a whole new level of automation and capabilities. I think when right. you can feed in when you can feed in your own. Uh, custom fields and data into the prompt um, and have a unique um, output from that that's unique to that individual opportunity. I can, like, because we like to write the first line um, and use that. So we have a called the pattern interrupt in sales, right? We're trying to break yeah. the mold and we give them a, and we have um, the team sit there and they, they write the unique line for that individual person and then everything else is templated uh, because the rest of the outreach email is the same. So I'm, I'm just thinking now how we can now. Level, you know, level that up uh, once again, and have a custom field where the team modify the prompt for that individual opportunity, and then that will get fed into the template. Yeah, for right? sure. And let me, yeah, let me do something and see if I can quickly get. Since we're talking about it already, so here is the here's like the type. So we have like when you create custom fields, you have URL, date, number, whatever. Now you have the AI power. So the AI power, now you're going to be writing the AI prompt, right? right? But, and then the, the, we're going to give a little bit more 
guidance to the users and say the the key the reserve let's call them reserved words are website and URL. So you could say what is the H1 on this and then you say URL and because it's basically going to transform and understand you what it is that you want. So what's the H1 on this URL? URL meaning the content of this website. Yeah. We're pat and then okay. so let's say you know once I you know add add this field, you know whatever this is H1, I call it H1. I added the field. Now if I go and I personalize, if I go to the personalization, um, let's go to let me edit this and on personalization detail screen a little bit of uh, and then i'm going to go to the ai fun let's go to peer analogy let's go to here um now i have this h1 you're going to be able yeah, to basically because it's still i turned it on for it's in it's in it's in development uh but technically yeah. now you got this populate ai so if you have a bunch of fields you'll be able to click populate ai and you're good to go and also this is one one by one but in reality uh what you want is you want to select all of them and you're going to say personalized vai mm, this is yeah. the mind-blowing stuff because we've always been talking about personalizing your emails right now mm. those are the key two key things in order to get responses is write solid templates right make mm -hmm. sure make sure that your your pitches are solid and to personalize them right now you got the ai now you got the, the pitches written by ai utilizing mm -hmm. all the best practices and and from the from the data study of million emails and now on top of that you have the personalization done via ai it's really going to take it's really yeah. going to take this to the next level so I'm just like, just thinking, like there's so many applications there. Like, one of my favorite links types uh, to build is link insertions. Um, so um, taking, obviously, you know what it is, but taking an existing article, updating it um, with, a, with a, a link to our target site in. Now, I always like to justify the link insertion uh, one to the algorithm, two to the user, of course, and just justify as in make a make a considerable update to the existing post and improve it somewhat, and then of course include your link. I know that some link builders are totally okay with just highlighting some text, exact match or whatever, and then you, uh, linking that, but but it doesn't feel very legit to me. And um, so we like to add some add some additional value to that article we might update it to include some more um some more points or the more up to date um you know information etc and then include the link in that so so our writers are there refreshing and you know updating these posts and things i can see and, and writing like short like snippets to to add into that post i can see now how we could potentially tell uh, tell the AI to do that for you automatically yeah. and even just include it in the email and say, go and drop this, you know, or not go and drop this on this page, but, you know, persuade them, recommend, suggest that they include this new updated paragraph with your link in, of course, yep. and, yep. Uh, and drop it into the post. So I can see how that can be automated now. If you go through that whole AI personalization step, it does the work for you. Remember, you can always go back um, and when you're at the at the compose level, I don't have anything here, but at the compose level, you can see all of your columns here and really just verify, maybe spot check them at the very least. Yeah, yeah. Just like, does this sound, is this, is this good data? Is this good content? Is this a good sentence for me to include in my email template? And then the lastly, obviously, when you're at the compose stage, you could say, you know, preview and send and actually do it there, like see what it actually sounds like in an email still yeah. speeds up the process yeah. tremendously but gives you that um that extra level of supervision making sure that solid emails are going out to mm. your target yeah i agree i think that's really important that with any ai work no what no matter what scenario we still need to manually error check and um you know stop it going off piste which it will it will happily do unsupervised and just just go and do some some something crazy so um, yeah, we don't want to don't want to just 
send out low value, like, you know, crazy stuff. Our, our relationships with sites and things and, and our reputation is, you know, is super important and we want to protect that. So, yeah, so I like that you can go through and you can just uh, check everything, smart compose, uh, smart preview, sorry, and, um, uh, and then, yeah, edit stuff if necessary. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Next thing. Uh, which yeah. is one, I've been trying to show you this as well. It's <laughs> light. It's light, right? But still, uh, so you get to get ideas, the typical get ideas that we have. Um, and then the AI assistant, um, I think I have some drafts in here as well. Uh, so like managing peanut analogy. So this is kind of like target audience. Uh, it's a recipe and cooking websites, topic one, topic two, pack three, how many keywords I want. And then basically just gives me my list of keywords. Um, and this, these are like, so long tail keywords for me to, uh, do prospecting with, and then I can just mm -hmm. insert them into a keyword list and boom, here they are. And then you can obviously add more or remove some of the ones that don't, don't meet a certain criteria. All right. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you was the replies. So I got an email. This was a reply to a guest post pitch, the impact of drinking water, uh, on our environment, a fresh perspective. So it looks like the email came in. Uh, thank you for your interest in contributing to my blog. I want to let you know that I do have a placement fee for reaching uh, guest articles. The fee helps uh, cover various aspects of such content, uh, aspects such as content review, editing, formatting, and promoting, ensuring uh, the best practices mm -hmm. for both readers and guest contributors. Uh, looks like they're interested in getting 400 bucks. All right, so let's let's get AI. So we have a, a couple of built-in. We're going to be adding more of these, a couple of different tones. I'll stick with casual. Let's get AI to generate this. Now it's using um, it's using we we've, we've tuned it to train to use uh, negotiating frameworks that are used for training salespeople. When salespeople negotiating contracts, there's prices and things like that. Um, yeah. They're using certain frameworks. This is what, that's how we tuned it uh, for the sales sales negotiation mm -hmm. frameworks. And so we'll give it a second. This is why I would, I should be coming and doing this here rather than going to chat GPT and copying and pasting around and things because like this this data set is much more specific to the scenario that we're that we're in, what we're trying to achieve. And obviously you've got, you know, ten plus years of doing this stuff, so you can you can train your train your models uh, accordingly. So uh, exactly. plus, also, it's right there where you need to where, where you need to actually send the email. That's, instead of all the, yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely take the email, you know, write the prompt to Chat GPT, ask it. it it's not going to give you this. I mean, it'll give you probably a decent response. You could do it, even if it did give you a decent response. You still need to go between the tools, right? Where Pitchbox. Yeah is it's it's in place once i hit send the next mm. next email pops in yeah. um and what we're doing is we're actually going to be working on the classification of emails as well we're going to come back and tell you that we we recommend so right now it's just you, you get to choose but the next mm. step is for us to rec to to understand the context of the email and recommend what type of response you okay should, right so it's going to even yeah. help it's going to even help further. And, and like with agencies like you, I don't know if you guys um, have a VAs or not, but there's a lot of agencies that we work with, they use VAs and those VAs, English is not their first language. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes we see them making mistakes and when they're communicating right with people that yeah. utilizing AI, that's no longer a concern. This will handle it for them. Yeah. Makes it all so much, so much more accessible, doesn't it too? Yeah. Uh, to everyone and um, uh, yeah I was just thinking without this feature I mean you could potentially build your own um, a much more primitive version because it would be based on the generic model from uh, from open AI but you could you could zap this email content over to um, to open AI write with a prompt write the response and, and send it back in potentially but when you're doing that all day long you're just going to burn through so much so many credits right yeah. so um so it makes it you know much less scalable so you know the fact that it's all it's all it's all done natively within pitchbox now it's pretty cool yeah absolutely now what i'm also super excited about is the automation so automation is basically kind of like 
I call it built-in Zapier into Pitchbox. Um, and we have these uh, pre-built automations and uh, that allow you to stop doing the same type of work inside Pitchbox. So majority of them is basically triggers and actions, but they're all triggers and Pitchbox, actions and Pitchbox. So Zapier is triggers somewhere and action else somewhere else where this is kind of keeping it, keeping it home. So um, just to go through, I'm not going to go through all of them, but obviously out of office, um, email received, then resume outreach, archive email, tag the opportunity. I actually like this one, out of office, email received, snooze, um, and tag the opportunity. So if you get an out of office email, ham on vacation, I'll be back on uh, 30th of May. You want to snooze this email because there's no point following up or shooting an email, snooze this email until they return. Um, others like uh, we've had customers request this, like we want to get a Slack message once the first reply from an opportunity is received. So you could do that. Um, this one I think is extremely useful. A lot of people come back and say, you know what? I yeah. get a lot of uh, uh, autoresponders and that's typical, right? You're doing cold outreach. You're going to get some autoresponders. Question is, what's your typical action? Well, it's an autoresponder. I probably want to move on to the next contact at this company. So I'm going to archive the email, move to the next contact and resume outreach. Don't have to do that manually anymore, right? So if I select this, I say when an autoresponder is received um, in any of the projects that I have, do what? Archive the email, remove contact from opportunity because it could be like contact us or info or something else or editor. And then resume outreach, which means it's going to move to the next contact. And that's yeah. it. And, just, and, you know, and it's just going to be um, autoresponder, resume. <laughs> and, um, and that's it. Once I save. Nice. And um, I have it here. I can just turn it on. And, and now I got this, got this thing running. Um, yeah. I'll go back to the suggestions. I also like this one out of office. Uh, email is received on any of the project, um, snooze the email. But the snoozing of the email, it's not just like snooze it for two days. Actually, the tooltip will tell you, we try to detect when they're coming back. Typically, email is like, oh, I'm out of the office from so, and to, you know, or I'm, I'm, I'm on vacation coming back on a third. So what it's going to do is going to snooze days after they come back. So you don't want to... You don't want to just snooze it two days because you don't know when they're coming back. You don't want to also follow up with them the day they come back. They probably have a ton of emails in their inbox. Give them two days after they come back, and then you can send in, and then you can you know kind of reach out to them. Um, and I also want to maybe tag the opportunity. Um, but the reality is there are so many actions: um, snooze email, delete email, archive, add tags, add tasks, add notes to opportunity, notify Slack. Obviously, if you want to get things out. Out the door somewhere, you can send a webhook um, and get really mm -hmm. uh, nerdy here yeah. with uh, yeah, yeah. passing the, the payload data and stuff. Payload can be from the actual trigger. You like the stuff. I mean, it gets it gets really nerdy, uh, but it, it's, it's really cool. So automation, um, I could just create a new automation from start. And then we have a bunch of triggers not, that are not in the library. New task is created. The task is completed. Um, chase up mature. So are you yeah. familiar with our chase ups? Yeah. Okay. Chase box. So, yeah. Yeah. Chase box. So let's say, you know, you've sent a, you, you're pitching somebody guest post. They're like, yeah, send me some stuff. You gave them an article, um, and you're expecting them to get back to you with feedback on that article in two days. Well, if they don't, if they don't get back to you, you want to create a task? No, you basically create a chase up. You're, you're saying, here's my article. Uh, give me some feedback, please. And when you send that email, say chase it up in two days. And then what's going to happen is in two days, it's going to pop into your chase box. That's, I mean, the customers love that. But now you have chase up matured because chase up is still some an action you got to go take. And typically it's going to be send them the follow-up email. So now, now chase up matured, two days went by. They didn't get back to you with feedback on that article. Okay, no problem. Uh, let's send them a follow-up email. And what is it going to be? It's going to be a canned response. And it's going to be, you can set one up. It's not yeah. going to have a great weekend, but it's going to be follow-up on my blog post that I just send them. How many days? Yeah. And this is adding days to the maturity. So let's say you waited for two days. Then you want to wait another day 
after it's matured and then you want to get it you know send it out to them at 11 o'clock in the morning yeah hands free yeah is this you know we got obviously pitchbox got, got the follow-up on cold emails but now this is follow-ups on relationships yeah yeah right exactly so well, I think the team are going to love you for this because it's all the boring stuff that they they hate doing, right? But we have to, we all have to do it. Yeah, um, you know they can they can just they can automate that and just focus on, uh, you know, the more the more interesting stuff. And yeah, you know, seeing seeing the webhook there, I'm just thinking like webhook. Okay, how about sending using the webhook to send um, feature and um, to connect to the Phantom Buster API. And then send the person a LinkedIn request, connection request, and stuff like that, you know, like or Twitter or just like, yeah, so many, so many potentials there in terms of uh once, yeah, once you once you hook up the APIs and things. So it's really cool. Yeah. And like things like, for example, like if you have a team that's setting up campaigns, and then you have another team member that's going through the inspection and personalization step, mm. like you could say campaign uh finished prospecting and notify by slack and you say which channel mm. um and that goes to the team that does yeah. the inspection and says you know we've we just we've just got a new campaign in pitchbox yeah go ahead and start you know go ahead and start doing it so there's a lot of and like i really like also um opportunity has been tagged this one's really cool because like, for example, let's say you're doing guest post right you're pitching somebody and they came back to you and and the people who are managing the inbox they're basically, okay, I got somebody that came back and said, yeah, they want the guest post. Now you got to, let's say, get it to get it to over to your content people. So you could tag it with neat content. And once the neat content is tagged, then you can create mm. a task for, you know, add a task mm. to the opportunity and um, assign it to, um, where's the assignment? Uh, send complete reply. Um, Oh, there you go. I'm blind. Um, assign it to your content writers inside Pitchbox. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And, could and then, you, um, sorry, go on, please. And then, or, or you could say, or you can send it as a, as a, um, uh, a webhook and get it out into uh, Monday.com or yeah. Yeah, what, whatever it is, whatever it is that you use. Yeah. Click up our table. You know, they're, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Main things, exactly. right? So yeah. And, and then send that over to your content team. Uh, yeah. To, to work on so i mean yeah. like we are super excited to see what customers start coming up with you know some of the use cases because there's a lot of triggers and a lot of the actions here um that you could utilize really just to simplify just to simplify your name even like even like something has been like for example let's say you have a bunch of tags on an opportunity and then now you know that the opportunity milestones uh, ch changed, right? Uh, and it's changed, and the milestone opportunity milestone changed, which is maybe you know it's it's moved forward. Or yeah, and and now you could say and condition uh, from milestone, it went from let's say got a reply, and it went to two milestone and, negotiation. Uh, negotiation. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm like, I probably have like some of the tags on there that are yeah. no longer relevant. I can remove a tag. Right. This way you can keep your, you know, you keep your pipeline clean, um, you know, because everybody thinks about like adding more and more and more stuff. I'm about mm. removing stuff. Like I want to declutter, it, yeah. right? I want to declutter. Maybe I want to mark a complete, a task is completed or remove the tasks or remove the tags. I like, I like things clean, right? This is why we actually created chase up because typically what mm -hmm. customers would do they would send that article that we talked about as an example and then they say okay i sent an email with an article i'm waiting for them to come back to me in two days what they would do is they would create a task follow up if they don't respond say two days went by it's time for them to follow up what are they doing they're going to the inbox finding that email hitting reply and sending that email well why am i going to create a task when i can just say would you like the follow-up to happen in two days Yes. Instead of the task, now you have a chase up that matured. Now all you do mm -hmm. is just say, yes, send that email, right? Um, so again, it's decluttering. It's, it's creating less work for the team. 
mm. where I want them, where I want like all our customers spending their most of their time is in the relationship stage, talking to yeah. people, negotiating, figuring out, writing content, getting right. <laughs> exactly. Not that labor and test intensive part mm. of the of the outreach. And I think that's what really what, as you know, that's why we built Pitchbox. We we've tried to yeah. automate a lot of that grunt work and really leave you with the the relationship building part of it, which is the mm. exciting part, communicating with exactly. You. Right, and yeah. let the technology take care of the rest. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, just moving all the the admin and yeah, that boring stuff over to uh, to the software. And then the team yeah. can just, yeah, focus on, because really, because the the bar, you know, the this stuff becomes more, more accessible, we really have to stand out creatively. Um, to succeed now much more than than before so to start out creatively we need that's where people need to be focusing their time but the thing is that sometimes they've got mixed responsibilities and duties because they get pulled into this stuff and this um, you know doing the admin clearing out the out of offices tagging everything up uh, correctly um, you know deleting uh, deleting things but yeah we if we can set up these automations now then they can just uh, uh, yeah, focus on content, the relationships, uh, running the campaigns, the strategy, the logic, that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, with Pretty with cool. AI and automation, uh, I think it's you know it's a beautiful marriage, um, where the automation utilizes the AI, uh, it mm. leverages that right to to kind of give you a really much better experience. Yeah. So that's automation. Now, I talked about Zapier, and I know you're a big fan. Um, mm. Let me go uh, search uh, Pitchbox and Zapier. I don't know where. So let's go. So that's Pitchbox and Zapier. Super excited about that. And now I know you're going to have some fun here. Look at the amount of triggers. <laughs> yeah, there's a, build. there's a lot more I than mean, before. Yeah, cause, you, cause you don't I'm, need to log into you don't need to log into Pitchbox no more. You can build everything. <laughs> and say, nah, I'm kidding, but I mean it's got everything. Yeah, everything. Um, you can build so much cool stuff here. A, uh, as an example, like I I think this was a, a couple years back. Remember we were sitting in the and and at at the Hilton Bar in Brighton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you were talking about it would be so cool to have uh, a Zapier be triggered when a custom field is updated. Boom. You have that here, which is mm. like when you now we have the custom field, like custom field update. Um, where is this? Custom custom field updated. Um, an instant trigger on that. And now you could do actions. Yeah. Obviously, there's a bunch of actions that you could do inside pitch. You can send yeah. this back into pitch box, but obviously the idea of Zapier is getting it out somewhere else, right? Same yeah. example of, of, uh, of, you could say you can have a, you can have a custom field, like, do we need content? And mm. it's, you know, yeah. it's checked or need content. Now it's a checkbox. You check yeah. it trigger and now get it out mm. into whatever other system you need and do all kinds of stuff. And yeah. then once the article, let's say it is an article, and then let's let's say it's uh, for the simplicity sake, it's Trello. You got that Kanban board, and now it's a you know new article required. And you got links to mm. you got links to Pitchbox opportunity right in there. And as your content team moves it down, it's like in you know mm. writing, then editing, then yeah. in the approval, and then approved. With let's say inside that Trello card, there's a, a link to a Google Doc. That is a trigger on inside Zapier on the Trello, then now in the actions, it can do a hell lot of stuff, hell of, hell of a lot of stuff here, like add a note that with a link to the Google doc or yeah. create a task for the outreach person to send an email to to the, the target and say, your article has been, you know, been written um, down to like, you know, get the communication in there. I mean, it's mm. like, there's so much stuff here. Cool. So, like as an example, how we might, well, how we use the custom field here as a um, as a trigger is when uh, the content status is updated on Airtable. 
So when that content status is updated to authored or actually not authored, but probably edited, then it's ready to be, it's ready to, uh, to be sent off to the prospect. So now we can somehow trigger, well, wait for that custom field to be updated on. I mean, that would be the other way around actually. That would be using Airtable as a trigger, yeah. uh, which then would then feed it back into Pitchbox and carry out uh, yeah. an action there. And for example, you could have a custom field to say all of these, all of these opportunity IDs are ready to be sent. The content is ready to be sent off. Yep. Uh, so, they, so a user can filter and say, okay, uh, I'm going to go and get the content for all of these and send them off. You can even go one step further and actually you could, with a little bit of hackery, actually get Zapier, Pitchbox and AI to even send the content off for you, right? Because um, you, can, you can use the Google Docs integration. Um, you can change the the sharing settings in Zapier for the Google Doc, uh, and then it creates a, a, a public share URL uh, for, the, for the Google Doc with the, with the content yep. on. Then you can yep. insert that into, the, into your response template and say, you know, hey, Alex, here's that content I promised you. Here's the link to the Google Doc. You can just click the link, download it, and, and publish it on your blog. Exactly. Job done. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. And that's sort of, that's sort of a, it's still part of the process, right? But there's also, uh, situations as an agency, you might want to let your customers know what you're working on, or maybe the, some of the links that you've already won for them. So you mm -hmm. could have a Zapier when a milestone change to a win, you can then get that into a Google sheet that you share with a client, getting a, another row in there. Yeah. With, reporting. With the information yeah. that you got, you got the link on this website, mm. right? So yeah, yeah for, for reporting. Yeah. So you can also have like, I mean, we have we have this anyway, but I think I can certainly see some improvements now. Uh, real time reporting, where the client can log in at any time and see. Because sometimes when clients don't see, because obviously there's a whole workflow that we're going through, outreach, right. um, you know, um, you know, negotiation, almost there, one uh, lost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when they don't, you know, when they're waiting on the links and they're like they're anticipating um, and looking forward to, to the links coming through. Uh, sometimes, of course, outreach has delays, um, things happen. And if there is a delay, it's, you know, if a client says, hey, how's, how's it looking this month with delivery? Um, if we can say, here's all the one links, we're a bit behind, but then in some of the previous, yeah. the earlier stages, we've actually got, you know, for example, this happens at Christmas, you know, during the holidays a lot. December, everything shuts down, and then there becomes this big backlog of, um, opportunities and content uh, and stuff waiting to go live and then we come back in January and February and then that huge backlog starts to uh, slowly clear up so yeah. we can show that to the client and say like you know try not to worry it's just, this happens every year we're just waiting for the backlog to slowly sort of drip drip down uh, to uh, to whittle down and turn into the one status so you can yeah, yeah you can automate that real time reporting you there. can yeah i mean with the reports you can start sending uh you can start sending opportunities into a google sheet those that matured to a specific state like for example negotiation yeah. so yeah. they can look at say here's our win in the ta in a separate tab but here's the one we're negotiating with and you can you know in in zapier you could obviously find you can you don't have to Add a row, you can find a row. So you could say find, and if the milestone has changed from negotiation to almost there, find a row, change the column to mm. you know to the new milestone. This way, yeah, you can keep your customers up to date on what's happening uh, mm. with your outreach. Yeah. We are working, and this is very close uh, to our updated uh, uh, Looker uh, integration. Yeah. So there it's going to be more on the aggregate data. So some things like you talked about, like there's so much work that has to, that goes before you see the one link, such as, mm. you know, milestone changes and, or like the progress, the emails, number of emails sending out. So we're going to be sending a lot of that aggregated data over to Looker. So you'll be able to actually share uh, a report with the customer. And that's going to be in real time because yeah, as they run it, cool. it's hitting up yeah. Pitchbox's integration, which is the API in real time pulling out that data and, yeah. and drawing that stuff. That's going to be really cool for, for agencies to show that value, right? Because yeah. you know, sometimes we get the question, why don't we just do this in-house? And 
they don't even know they don't even know how how much of pain in the ass outreach is so if we can if we can pipe through all of those uh, that campaign statistic data and things we can actually show you like this is all of the different activity that's going on uh, from prospecting to like planning campaigns to um you know all the negotiations and uh, and things so if we can if we can better show that value then of course it you know it's good yeah. good for agencies like us absolutely yeah it's going to show how much work is uh, is involved in building links. I know. <laughs> like hey give, you know give me a link it's not yeah. uh, it's tough it's a lot of work it's like sales i always say pitches that link building is like sales uh you got the, yeah. the whole life cycle of the process mm -hmm. from prospecting to closing yeah exactly so, um but yeah i mean uh we're super excited our development team is super excited uh our support team is super excited uh about all these the, the ai the automations the new zapier some of the other new cool yeah. stuff and uh with the AI personalization it's gonna be yeah oh. and me too man like i'm just looking at this and i'm like oh this changes everything i'm gonna have to go i need to go back and look at all, all of our all of our sops and think and go through them all and think right which ones of these now can be improved or are now obsolete or we can we can move into pitch box and free up the team to do other things you know so um, yeah, super cool. Well, super excited for it, you know, to see it come out. And um, yeah, thank you for yeah, going man. through it. All right, cool. Nice. Uh, as always, man, it's good good to see you. Good to chat yeah. and uh, keep in touch. Likewise. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Bye. Thanks.